हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज प्रियंका टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी मल्टीपल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम विथ एक्जैक्ट एनालिसिस सो व्हाट इज दिस मल्टी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम व्हेन द सिस्टम इज हैविंग मोशन टू और मोर डायरेक्शन देन द डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम आर आल्सो इन टू और मोर सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज मल्टीपल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सो वी हैव वन सिस्टम ऑफ स्प्रिंग एंड मास Here, spring stiffness three k, k and k, and masses are four m, two m, and m. So it is this system is having the motion. So we will give here the different displacement for these masses. So for this mass, four m, the displacement is in the forward direction, having x one. Then for this two m mass, the displacement will be x two, and for this mass m, the displacement will be the x three. So if we observe. Here are the three displacement. Now we will take one assumption because this displacement are different. That is, the x one is more than x two is more than x three. So this is our assumption. So we will say that assume x one is more than x two is more than x three. So this is our assumption. Now we are going to draw the free body diagram. so how to draw so for that we have to take first these masses that is 4m 2m and m so because of these masses there is the inertia force so inertia force that means we have to show the acceleration so how to show the acceleration so we know that the acceleration is in the direction of the motion so for this mass 4m here is in the forward direction there is the displacement x1 so what is the acceleration so we can say that double differentiation of this x1 with respect to time t that is acceleration so we will say that x1 double dot in the same way for this mass 2m we will say the acceleration x2 double dot and here it will be acceleration x3 double dot now we will apply what is the spring effect for this masses because these three masses are attached with the help of this spring so if we observe here is the spring having stiffness 3k now what is happening this spring is attached to this mass and mass is moving in the forward direction so when this mass is moving in the forward direction then this spring is getting extended so here in this direction the spring is getting extended so we we can say that there is the expansion in the spring so because of motion there is the expansion in the spring so what is happening so because of the spring stiffness k, k 3k spring tries to compress so what is the direction of compression so i will show here the direction of compression so the spring stiffness because of the spring stiffness 3k here is the compression that is occurs so we have to show this compression process so here from the mass 4m the force is getting applied by the spring stiffness 3k in the outward direction so we have to show it in this outward direction from that block so what is the spring force so we know that spring force is equal to kx where k is the spring stiffness and x is the displacement so here the spring stiffness is given 3k so we have to take 3k into what is displacement displacement is x1 so we have to take this now we will move for the next spring so for the next spring k what is happening now on this spring these are attached to these two masses 4m and 2m and these two masses having different displacement that is x1 and x2 so we will try to understand this suppose here is the spring of this stiffness k then here on this spring there are two displacement that acts that is here is the x1 and here is the x2 now both are in the forward direction so what is happening but these are different so our assumption is that x1 is greater than x2 means what the total effect of x1 because it is greater than x2 that is applied on this spring k so what is happening so because of x1 is greater than x2 here the compression in the spring so this is the compression process because of that motion 
motion of these masses there is the compression force that is getting applied on the spring with stiffness k so what is happening so because of compression the spring force that tries to expand so i will show here the direction of expansion so we have to show here is the expansion so in this direction the spring force with stiffness k tries to expand and what is the total or total displacement because here there are effect of two displacement that is x1 also and x2 also so what is the displacement that we have to consider that is x1 minus x2 so here displacement will be our x1 minus x2 that we have to consider so what is the spring force k into x but here instead of x we have to consider x1 minus x2 so how we can show this direction now on this mass 4m this force spring force is applied in this inward direction so i will show here and on this mass 2m it is applied in this direction and what is the spring force that is stiffness into displacement so here is the total displacement that is x1 minus x2 so i will write here k into bracket x1 minus x2 now we will move for the next so again for the next spring there is again stiffness k now here this is also getting affected by the two displacement that is x2 and x3 so i will write here here is the x2 and here is the x3 and both are in the forward direction so which is having the maximum displacement that is x2 so again here the compression force is getting applied so because of this compression force here total displacement we have to write x2 minus x3 so because of the compression force the spring force tries to expand so what is the spring force that is stiffness multiplied by displacement so here total displacement is x2 minus x3 so if we observe on this mass 2m the direction of spring force is in this direction and on this mass m the direction is this so we have to show that so i will show this this is the direction so what is the spring force that is k multiplied by the total displacement so what is total displacement that is x2 minus x3 so i will write here now we will apply the newton second law of motion so what is this newton second law of motion that is summation of all forces which is equal to mass into acceleration so we can say that summation of all forces that is for this masses three masses 4m 2m and m what are the forces that are getting applied due to this spring or we can say due to this spring force which is equal to mass into acceleration so we know that the acceleration are x1 double dot x2 double dot and x3 double dot so we will move for the first mass that is 4m so we can say that mass that is mass is 4m so i will write here 4m and what is the acceleration acceleration is x1 double dot which is equal to now we have to write what is the summation of forces so if we observe here the mass into acceleration that is in the forward direction and the forces that act on this 4m mass that are in the opposite direction that is in the backward direction so we will consider here the negative sign that is minus 3k x1 minus k x1 minus x2 then we will move for the next mass that is the mass 2m so again for the mass 2m what is the mass into acceleration so here mass is 2m into x2 double dot which is equal to now this mass into acceleration that is in the forward direction so if we observe this force that is k x1 minus x2 is in the direction of this mass into acceleration so we will take here the positive sign that is k x1 minus x2 bracket complete now this k x2 minus x3 is in the opposite direction so we will take here minus k x2 minus x3 now again we will move for this third mass m so what is here the mass into acceleration that is m into x3 double dot now if we observe this force or spring force is in the direction of this acceleration so i will take here k x2 minus x3 
now we will simplify these three equations so how to simplify it that is 4m x1 double dot which is equal to minus 3k x1 minus k into x1 and here minus k into minus x2 that is plus k x2 so we have to shift to the one side only that is 4m x1 double dot plus 4k x1 minus k x2 is equal to 0 now in the same way we will simplify the other two terms that is 2m x2 double dot minus k x1 plus 2 k x2 minus k x3 is equal to 0 and m x3 double dot minus k x2 plus k x3 is equal to 0. So this is the three equations. So we have to find out the solution of the differential equation. So here the differential equation means here for the displacement x1 x2 and x3 here we have to take the double differentiation with respect to time t. So now we will consider here the motion is vibration and we know that the uh, vibration is we will consider here the simple harmonic motion. So what is the solution for this simple harmonic motion? So for that I have given one video that is the link is given in the description box for the derivation is derived for that solution. And here what is the solution that is x1 that is displacement x1 is equal to capital X1 sine of omega t x2 is equal to capital X2 sine of omega t and x3 is equal to capital X3 sine of omega t where this capital X1 x2 and x3 are known as the amplitudes. So the link is given in the description box for this derivation so you can refer that. So now if we observe now we have to apply the value of x1, x2 and x3 in this equation. So if we observe here x1 double dot, x2 double dot and x3 double dot is there. So we have to take here the differentiation. So how to take? So first we will find the value of x1 double dot. So for that here the value of x1 is capital X1 sine of omega t. So we have to differentiate this equation with respect to time t. So how, what is the answer? So I will write here that is x1 dot is equal to that is capital X1 it will remain same. Now here is the t term that is sine of omega t. So it will become cos of omega t and for that omega t here we have to multiply with omega. Now but we want x1 double dot. So again we have to differentiate this term that is x, x1 double dot is equal to. So capital X1 it will remain same and here cos of omega t it will become minus sine of omega t and for this omega t we have to take omega and this previous omega that means it will become omega square. So what is the answer for x1 double dot that is minus omega square into x1 into sine of omega t in the same way for x2 double dot minus omega square x2 sine of omega t and for x3 double dot minus omega square x3 sine of omega t so these are the three answers now we will apply all these values for this equation number one two and three and we have to simplify it so at the same time we will simplify it so i will take here the first equation that is 4m what is the value of x1 double dot that is minus omega square sine of omega t into x1 plus 4k. Now what is the value of x1 that is x1 sine of omega t minus k x2 that is k into x2 that is capital X2 sine of omega t which is equal to zero so if we observe now we have to simplify this term so if we observe here the common term is sine of omega t so we will take this common and shift to the right hand side so what is the remaining equation that is minus 4m omega square x1 plus 4k x1 minus k x2 which is equal to 0 now in the same way we have to simplify the other two terms so now we know that the sine of omega t is the common term so now we will put the values so here this will be equation number i will say 4 and now for the next i will take 2m now instead of x2 double dot we have to take here capital x2 omega square that we have to take the minus sign so x2 
and omega square then here is the minus k now what is the value of x1 that is we have to take only x2 that is capital x2 because here sine of omega t is the common term so we have to shift it to the right so i will not take that term then plus 2k so i will write here 2k and what is the value of x2 that is capital x2 minus k into capital x3 is equal to 0 so this will be the equation number 5 in the same way now m x3 so i will take here m now instead of x3 we have to take minus omega square capital x3 minus k into now what is the value of x2 that is capital x2 plus k into instead of x3 we have to take the capital x3 which is equal to 0 so this will be the equation number 6 so these are the three equations in the simplified form where the displacement x1 x2 and x3 is getting replaced by the amplitudes with capital x1 capital x2 and capital x3 now we have to consider this three equations that is the equation number 4 5 and 6 in the matrix form so how to arrange it so for that we require what are the coefficients of x1 x2 and x3 so what is the coefficient of x1 here in the equation number 4 that is 4k minus 4m omega square and for x2 it is minus k there is no any coefficient of x3 so we have to take it as a zero so we have to write it one by one that is minus 4m omega square plus 4k then here minus 4k and third there is no coefficient of x3 so we will consider it at, as a zero now in the second equation if we observe for the x2 there are two terms that is 2m and 2k that is 2m omega square and 2k so here we have to take here that is the here is the plus 2k and here is the minus 2m omega square so we have to write it now what is the coefficient of x1 that is minus k so we have to write here as a minus k then the coefficient of x2 minus 2m omega square plus 2k that we have to write and what is the coefficient of x3 that is minus k again for this equation number 6 there is no x1 so we will take coefficient as a 0 for x2 it is minus k so we have to write here as a minus k and for x3 it is uh, minus m omega square plus k so we have to write and then we will write here the amplitude x1 x2 x3 which is equal to 0 so this we have to convert into the matrix form so if we observe there are two matrix now for this two matrix which is equal to 0 so either this first matrix is equal to 0 or this second matrix is equal to 0 but we know that the amplitude cannot be 0 so we will take this determinant that is this which is equal to 0 that means we will put here 4k minus 4m square then minus 4k which is equal to 0 so if we write this then we have to expand this matrix form so after expansion we will get the two equations so what are those two equations that is k minus m omega square and in the second bracket 8 m square omega square minus 16 k m omega square plus 3 k square is equal to 0 so what is the solution so for that solution we have to take here k minus m omega square is equal to 0 and this second equation is equal to 0 so when we simplify this that is k minus m omega square that means which is equal to 0 that means k is equal to m omega square now what is the value of omega that is equal to under root of k by m now the second equation if we observe this is the quadratic equation that is if we observe 8m square omega square minus 16k m omega plus 3k square that is a square plus 2ab plus b square so what is the solution for this so we know that what is the solution for this that is x is equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so what is the a b c here so if we observe the a is coefficient of omega square that is 8 into m square then in the same way what is the b that is 6 minus 16 km and here 3k square is the c so now we will put the value therefore the omega square is equal to now minus b means what 
now here b is having minus sign so this minus minus become plus that is plus 16 km plus and minus under root of we have to take the value of b that is minus 16 km bracket square minus 4 ac so minus 4 into a that is 8 m square and c that is 3 k square divided by 2 into a that is 2 into 8 m square so if we simplify this so here omega square is equal to 16 km plus minus now we have to make the bracket for this and we have to make the multiplication for this that is 256 k square m square minus 96 k square m square divided by 16 m square so if we take the km as a common term because if we take this outside the under root then it will become km so if we take all from the outside that is km in the bracket 16 and plus minus now 256 minus 96 that is 160 that is under root of 160 divided by 16 m square so again this km divided by m square that is mm is getting cancelled that means it will become k by m 16 plus minus 12.649 by 16 so now it is having two solutions so how so first solution will be 16 by 16 plus 12 by 649 by 16 and second solution is 16 by 16 minus 12.649 by 16 so what is the solution here that is omega is equal to first solution under root of 179 under root of k by n that is equal to 1.338 and the second solution is 0 0.457 k by m so when plus sign is there that we have to take the two solutions that is for the plus sign and for the minus sign so when plus sign is there then it will become 1.338 and when minus sign is there then it will become 0 0.457 now if we observe while we solve these three equations then we get the value of 3 omega that means i will make the bracket so this is the value here is the value and here is also the value so if we observe what is the coefficient of under root of k by m here is the coefficient is 1 that means we get the 3 values so this is the very small value then here then 1 and then again 1.338 so now we have to write it in the sequence so first value we have to write 0 0.457 under root of k by m second value we have to take 1 that is under root of k by m now this under root of k by m is having coefficient 1 and the third value we have to take 1.338 under root of k by m now we will move for the mode shapes that means we have to find out the amplitude ratio from these equations that means we have to find out x1 by x1 x2 by x1 and x3 by x1 so how to find out the x2 by x1 so if we observe this equation number 4 we can take here the x1 as a common term and we will shift here the coefficient of x2 that is minus kx2 to the right hand side then we will easily get the value of x2 by x1 that means x2 by x1 which is equal to 4k minus 4 a m omega square divided by k which is equal to x2 by x1 now how to get the value of x3 by x1 so if we observe this equation number 5 then we have to divide for all these equation with x1 then when we divide this value with x1 then minus 2 m x2 by x1 omega square minus k plus 2k x2 by x1 minus k x3 by x1 is equal to 0 so now we want the value of x3 by x1 so we will put uh, we will transfer this term that is minus k x3 by x1 to the right hand side and we know the what is the value of x2 by x1 that is 4k minus 4m omega square by k so we have to multiply with this so here this is the equation with this x2 by x1 so instead of x2 by x1 we have to put this value and we have to multiply the term that is this minus 2m and this 2k 
so when we multiply this that is after putting the value of x2 by x1 then our the equation will become minus 8m omega square k minus 8m square omega raised to 4 by k here this is the minus k because here x1 by x1 is there that is x1 x1 is getting cancelled plus 8k square minus 8m omega square k by k and we have to take this term that is equal to k x3 by x1 so we have to find out the value of x3 by x1 so we will shift this term k to the denominator so again if we write this formula now for these two parts that is having the same denominator that is k so we will combine these two so it will become minus 8m omega square k minus 8m square omega raised to 4 plus 8k square minus 8m omega square k divided by k square and here when we shift this k to the denominator this k will become k square and it will become minus 1 so again we will simplify this that is minus 16 m omega square k minus 8 m omega square plus 8 k divided by k square minus 1 so we, we will take here 8 by k square common then it will become k into bracket into bracket k minus m omega square bracket square minus 1 which is equal to x3 by x1 that means here the term a minus b bracket square where a is k and b is m omega square when we simplify this so what is the value of x3 by x1 that is equal to 4 k minus m omega square by k so i will give here that is the equation number 8 so this is the value of x2 by x1 that is for equation number 7 and this is the value of x3 by x1 that is the equation number 8. So now we have to put the value of omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3 for this equation number 7 and 8. So we have already calculated the value of omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. Now the first amplitude ratio that is x1 by x1 which is equal to 1. Now we will take the second amplitude ratio that is x2 by x1. Now we will take the value with respect to omega 1. So omega 1 is equal to 0 0.457 under root of k by m. So here is the value of x2 by x1. So instead of this omega we have to put this value. So it will become 0 0.457 square and under root of k by m it will become k by m. So if we simplify this, this m m is getting cancelled. And whatever is the answer, we have to take this k as a common. And this k and this denominator k is getting cancelled. So if we calculate this, the answer will be 3.16. Now in the same way, we will take the value of this omega 1 and we will apply for this x3 by x1. So here instead of omega, here it will become 0 0.457 square multiplied by k by m. So here again we have to simplify this. So if we observe here k minus m into omega square. So we have to take here k minus m into we have to multiply with this. This m, m is getting cancelled. So again we will take here k as a common and this k, k is getting cancelled. So here again the answer will be 4. So in the same way now we have to put the value of this omega 2 so this omega 2 value that is the coefficient is 1 that is 1 under root of km so this x2 by x1 so it will x2 by x1 with this value omega 2 it will become 0 and when we put this value that is under root of k by m then x3 by x1 it will become the value is minus 1 then in the same way we will put the value for this x2 by x1 that is omega 3 and then we will put the value x3 by x1 that is for the omega 3. So it will become minus 3.16 and here is the 4. So now we will apply these values for the mode shapes. So how to apply? So we have to take x1 by x1 that is 1. So for this value omega 1 we have 3 values that is I will mark here that is first value is for x1 by x1 that is 1 3.16 and 4 so how to apply so for the 1 so we have to start from 0 so on this horizontal line here is the 0 so for the 1 we have to take here so this is the amplitude and this is also amplitude that is x1 by x1 then here is the 1 then 
again 3.16 that is the value is more than 1 so again we have to take here 3.16 and again there is the value of 4 so in this way this is the shape now we will move for the second mode shapes that is for the value of m uh, this omega 2 so what is the value of omega 2 that is for x1 by x1 1 so we have to write here that is 1 then 0 and then minus 1 so how to write so first we have to take for the shape 1 so again i will move for this 1 so here is the value of x1 by x1 that is 1 but after that is moves to the 0 that is it is moves to the line on this line so again we have to move this line and then if we observe the third value then it is minus 1 so minus 1 that means below this line so again we have to take this line that is that means here is the minus 1 and here is the 0 so this is the second mode shape now we will move for the third so again for the third the value for the x1 by x1 that is 1 then here is minus 3 by 16 and then again it is 4 so how to complete it so again for 1 we will start from this 0 and here for the 1 then again we have to take the minus value that is minus 3.16 that means the next value will be below this line and then plus 4 that means we have to take here plus 4 so if we observe here we have to write 1 then second value minus 3.16 and here is the fourth. That means this is the third mode shape.